Hi everyone, it's Heidi here from the Nest Kids CPR and Allergy. We hope you're well today. Um, today we're going to talk about febrile convulsions. Um, it may or may not be something that you've heard of, um, but it's a relatively common part of childhood. Uh, one in 30 children um, suffer a febrile convulsion at some point um, between the age of six months and six years. Um, and it can be hereditary. And I know that the hard way because I used to have them as a child. I had many, many, many seizures as a child, uh, febrile convulsions as a child, and my son has had them as well. So they can be hereditary. So we'll go through what they are, what you can do, um, and uh, sort of symptoms and, and things like that about febrile convulsions. So febrile convulsion basically means febrile means hot, convulsion means fit. So it's when the temperature shoots up, often out of nowhere, often you, there's no pre-warning about it at all, and the temperature shoots up and they, the child actually goes into a seizure because the body can't cope with the temperature going so high so quickly. It's all about the speed of it. Okay, so I've got some notes here. So if you see me looking to the side, I apologize. I just don't want to miss anything. Um, so it is it is um, brought around by the sudden rise in temperature. And like we said before, one child in 30 will um, have a febrile seizure at some point in their life. Although it's really scary, it literally looks like an, ep an epileptic seizure. It's actually not harmful to your child at all. So um, it looks really frightening. And the parent, as a parent, you'll never forget it, but just know that if your child does suddenly start having a seizure, it's highly, highly, highly unlikely to be an epileptic seizure because that they are relatively rare in children. Obviously they happen, but they're quite rare and it's much more likely to be a febrile convulsion. So if your child does have a seizure, once they've recovered, we'll tell you about what to do in a second, but once they've recovered, it's a really good idea if you can to try and get a temperature, not during the event, but once, they're, once the seizure's finished, and they're still and they're calm, it'd be a good idea to try and get a temperature if you have a thermometer, because that can tell you everything you need to know um, while help is on the way. So they commonly happen between the ages of six months and six years. Um, so any time between there, commonly with toddlers, especially because toddlers aren't that well at telling you there's something wrong either. So they wouldn't be able to tell you if the throat's hurting or the ears are hurting. So febrile convulsion is created by a high temperature. So if we receive a child in hospital with a febrile convulsion, we're less concerned about the febrile convulsion and more concerned about where that fever's come from and why they've got it. Um, so we want to find the source of the infection. So signs and symptoms of a febrile convulsion, um, during the febrile convulsion, they might lose consciousness, they'll stiffen and jerk, they may go red or blue in the face, but just know that uh, they're normally very short-lived and the child is still usually getting enough oxygen in, um, so th there's not usually any problems with um, asphyxiation or anything horrid like that during a febrile convulsion. Giving paracetamol and ibuprofen to your child will not stop a febrile convulsion. Um, it's been shown over and over again that the fever just shoots up through anything that the child might have had, so it just doesn't seem to work at all. Um, signs and symptoms, we'll go back to them. So, yep, they might lose consciousness, stiffen and jerk, um, and they might go red or blue in the face. The convulsion might last for several minutes. Um, when the movements stop, your, you know, your child will regain consciousness, but they might be sleepy and a bit irritable afterwards, but just the same as they would be with, you know, with any illness if they're just feeling a bit rubbish. Um, but they might be quite quiet and a, and a little bit dazed. Um, usually they happen, obviously, with a temperature. There isn't really any other reason why your child would have a febrile seizure. And often it will occur before the parent knows there's anything wrong at all. Um, so what can you do during a febrile convulsion? So not a lot in a nutshell. There is nothing you can do to make the convulsion stop and you shouldn't try and make the convulsion stop. There's nothing you can do at all. The most important thing to do is stay calm. Remember that if your child suddenly goes into a seizure, it's highly likely to be a harmless febrile convulsion that while looks really scary, won't hurt your child. So you need to try and place your child on a soft surface. Now, if, they have, if they're having a convulsion on a hard floor, um, like a, you know, a marble floor or tiles on the kitchen floor, or anything like that, the best thing you can do, instead of picking them up on a hard floor, because remember they're gonna be having a convulsion this season, they'll be very, very stiff and they might fall out of your arms. So the best thing you can do is grab um, sofa cushions or blankets or a doona or anything like that and bring it to them and then gently roll them onto that rather than moving the child, okay? Um, 
try and watch exactly what happens so you can relay to the doctor later. Again, really helpful if you've got, um, if you knew that your child has a fever, if you managed to take the temperature afterwards. If it's not high immediately after, try again in 10 minutes because often it, the fever can be catching up. Um, the official guidelines say that if you can actually manage to get pictures or a video of it, then obviously that's very helpful. But I also understand from a parent's point of view, that's not the first thing you think of um, in, you know, when something like this is happening. Um, trying, if you can, to time roughly how long the convulsion um, goes for is really, really helpful. Um, don't restrain your child. You can actually do more damage trying to restrain your child because their muscles are completely stiff, including their jaw. So we just need to leave them to have the convulsion. Um, don't put anything in their mouth, including your fingers, because everything is very stiff and they could end up really cutting your finger. Um, and don't put, obviously don't put a child who's having a convulsion in a bath. I mean, don't even move them, let alone put them in a bath. That's not gonna bring their temperature down. We've got to remember that fever comes from the brain telling the body to heat up. So it's not, you know, it's this, cooling the skin down is not gonna help at all. Um, if your child has a febrile convulsion, the first thing you should do the first time is call an ambulance, just so that we can actually make doubly sure we know what this is and you can get help straight away. Um, it may be that subsequent febrile convulsions actually don't need, you don't need to call an ambulance, but that's, that'll only come from your own confidence and knowing what it is um, and the education that you get from the emergency department after the first one. So it's never wrong to call an ambulance if your child has a febrile convulsion, but for the first one, we should always be calling an ambulance. Um, if you don't go to the uh, emergency department, then present to your GP, because you need to find out where this fever is coming from that caused the convulsion. If your child has had a febrile convulsion and they've come around and they seem okay, then it may be okay to take them to the doctor or the emergency department in your car if there is two of you, because febrile convulsions don't happen back to back. That isn't how it works. So you, it's safe enough to have your child in the car um, in their restraints, um, but only if there's two of you, because it can be a bit daunting otherwise. Um, when to call an ambulance. So if your child, if it's your child's first convulsion, then we should always call an ambulance. If the convulsion is a subsequent one and it lasts more than five minutes, we should call an ambulance. If they don't wake up when the convulsion stops, or if you're just very, very worried about them and they just don't look very well at all, it's a remember, it's always your instinct. It's never wrong to call the ambulance. Sometimes when children have long convulsions, they might be watched in hospital for a while afterwards. But like I said, it, it, it's, it's trying, they're trying to make it more of a normal part of childhood and febrile convulsions are quite common. Um, so you would just look after your child at home after a febrile convulsion, the same as you would if they had an ear infection or any kind of illness. Um, so we don't resume your normal routine. There's nothing special you need to do. They might be cranky for a day or two because you know they're not feeling very well and they had fevers. Um, but you know they should be going to sleep at their normal time. Um, and remember that bed or cot is actually a very safe place for a child who may have a convulsion that we didn't even know about. You know, so I'm sure there's been many children that have had convulsions in their cots and beds that we get to them at night when they wake up and they cry out. And they maybe already had one, so it's a safe place for them. And um, so don't worry about putting them to bed. Um, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, you may never experience a febrile convulsion. Your child may never experience a febrile convulsion, um, but really helpful to know what it is because it can be terrifying if you don't know. Um, I know when my son had it, there was no signs of illness or fever at all. And even though I know what I know, I still was very, very anxious about it because number one, it's not very nice to see. And number two, there's always the what if, but of course it turned out to be a febrile convulsion and he's absolutely fine. Um, so uh, let us know if you have any questions about febrile convulsion. You can pop into our Facebook group, The Nest CPR and Allergy Flock, um, or you can email us or message us on Instagram at The Nest CPR. If you want more from The Nest today, we've got a couple of freebies. We've got the, um, the, our free first aid pocketbook, which is a downloadable PDF. Um, that has all, all sorts of things in it about CPR, choking, infant and child, um, you know, first aid scenarios that you may need to deal with. Um, and it's all on a, P a downloadable PDF that you can print out as well if you want to. We have our free um, Allergy Mums Survival Series, which is five days of just bite-sized videos with a workbook and a Facebook group as well with this allergy nurses inside answering questions. So that's all completely free. Um, and then if you want more than that, then we have our classes. We have like in-person classes. We have them in Canberra um, and New South Wales in Cogra and Bondi Junction. Uh, we also have our um, 
private couples classes, we do home classes, and we also do online classes now as well. So let us know um, what you think of today's video. Let us know if you've experienced a febrile convulsion and how it felt. Um, uh, tell us your stories and ask any questions you like. Okay, take care, bye-bye.